if I'm honest, I think these houseplants are the only things keeping me sane. <laughs> Isn't that right, guys, eh? Hey? Eh? Can I get you anything? Good morning, old friend. How are you, buddy? You are right? How are you today, Morgan? You know what they say, Ross. Get busy living or get busy dying. That is what they say. <sighs> Ross? Ross? Hello? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the host of that so great show. It's Ross! Hello and welcome back to the Not So Late Show, the UK's finest and only alternative comedy chat show broadcast directly from my dining room in Leeds. My name is Ross Briley and what an absolute pleasure it is to have absolutely nothing else to do but bring you another episode. This valiant attempt at facial hair is merely laziness and not a cry for help. I'm dealing with this whole thing absolutely fine. <laughs> We've managed to acquire ourselves a sponsor for the show. Burton's menswear have got in touch and asked me to be the face of their brand new indoor lockdown suits. They come in a huge range of colours. Blue, black, grey, navy, charcoal, grey again. Hand stitched with a completely unnecessary garish lining to make the wearer feel extra special. Even though you're simply one of the herd. Order today and Burton's will throw in a free tie. Because if you're anything like me, sometimes you forget where your penis is and it's nice to be reminded. Oh! There it is. Simply log on to www.geocities.com forward slash Burton's menswear forward slash not so late show forward slash special offer forward slash indoor suits forward slash free tie forward slash yes please dot html and enter the offer code CONY2012 to get 2% off your order. Now it's about time we cracked on with the episode and I can assure you that episode 2 is just as jam packed and slickly executed as episode 1. Isn't that right, John? Oh, I'm so excited I can barely sit still. <laughs> well, that's good to hear, but uh, I don't think you've got much choice. Don't you dare tell me what to do, Ross! Sorry, John, I didn't mean to, uh, didn't mean to offend you there. I'll cut you. <laughs> okay, then. Well, without further ado, let's see what's coming up on this week's show. Ooh! Old potato. Battered. A little girl. Under the box on your bench are three extraordinary ingredients. We would like you to cook us one plate of food. You have a larder full of herbs, spices, flavorings to help you create something truly delicious. Ladies and gentlemen, please reveal your ingredients. There you have it. One great plate of food, 50 minutes. Let's cook. It's a bit daunting when you have this much choice. Yeah, it's just kind of bringing it all together. <laughs> Maybe you don't mind me asking a personal question. How old are you? 21. That's quite young. <laughs> yeah, it was a lie. Why are you here on MasterChef? If I'm honest, I meant to apply for tipping point, but I got the email address wrong. <laughs> oh, wow. Where did you learn to cook? My parents always wanted a daughter, so they used to dress me up in gingham dresses and force me to make stuff on the uh, Fisher-Price stove. So you've been cooking since you were a little girl? Yeah, I have, yeah. <laughs> What's your dish going to be? Well, it's going to be a poached egg served on an old potato with a tomato sauce uh, some sugar stars, and I'm going to drink the beer. You have just five minutes. Five minutes to secure yourself a place. Kate, stop. Your time's up. Well done, everybody. Ross has made a poached egg on a bed of old potato with a tomato sauce and sugar stars. Ooh! <laughs> I 
I wanted something to make my heart thump today, you've done it. I think that's fantastic. Your sauce got a bit of a shine to it. It's nicely seasoned. Potatoes, love the flavour of them. I think they're great. That's fantastic. I think you and I share a sweet tooth. It's really nice and pink. You've got a runny egg yolk. Even though it's cooked, it gives the impression of being uncooked. Mm. I think you've done OK. <laughs> Making a decision here right now was not easy. Jack. Thank you. The second person going through to the next round. Steve. I'm just so happy I've made it through. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Good job, guys. Good job. Well done. Am I out, then? Absolutely delighted to be joined on the Not So Late Show by Leeds' finest comedic export. It's the one and only Maisie Adam, everybody. Maisie Adam. Thanks so much, Ross. That's a lovely intro. I just realised I've accidentally put you ahead of uh, ahead of Vic Reeves, so uh, he's from Leeds as well, isn't he? Oh, yeah, you can't put me ahead of him. Leeds' second finest comedic export. It's Maisie Adam. I'll take that. I'll take that. You're enduring this incredible experience in Brighton. I know, sunny Brighton. Um, yeah, it's very different. It's very different to Leeds, but uh, not that I'd know it. I've been stuck in here. Now, you've uh, you've joined us on the show specifically as our correspondent to talk about... I'm going to let you sum it up because you've got an incredibly snappy title and I will only butcher it. I'm going to tell you my, my top five essential lockdown non-essentials. In at number five, interesting neighbours. Next door has taken up the ukulele. Oh... I'm sorry. I did consider, this is terrible, it brings out the worst side in you, writing a note, excuse me, I'm an NHS nurse on nights, please can you not play the ukulele before 10am? My favourite one, however, has been um, directly opposite at the top, the other night at like two in the morning. She is hanging her head out of the window, singing to the street, right? She's, next thing I know, like proper pigeon poop, sick, all down the window. It was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. So you, when you're getting to know your neighbours, they don't... Um... They don't know you're getting to know them, but you are getting to know them. Uh, an excuse on why you can't do something. Oh, I'd love to do that, but I'm doing a family Zoom chat, and with, you know, the figures as they are at the moment, we don't know if this is the last time we're going to Zoom chat, Nana. It's dark, but it's true, and they don't ask again. Uh, another one is, uh, this is a great one for still making out like you're a good person. You go, oh, five o'clock. Oh, that's when I do the essential shot for the old load. And finally, if you've used those two, just I have the virus. Risky gamble, because if you do then get the virus, you've already played that hand, so... Uh, it's Netflix documentaries, right? Especially ones where there's a conspiracy. How knee-deep into the documentaries are you? Finished Tiger King. I've done all the big ones, you know, Making a Murder, Fire Festival. That one, um, Abducted in Plain Sight. That's mad, isn't it? That one. Have you watched Three Identical Strangers yet? Oh, that's the one where they all look like different versions of... Um... Andy Samberg? Yeah, they all look like different versions of him. Yeah, they do, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're all like, hey, uh, there's two Andy Sandbergs, and then suddenly there's three Andy Sandbergs. And... A sort of weird dream, that one. Not one I, I, I would be uh, too annoyed to have, I have to say. <laughs> That'd be a very niche category, wouldn't it, on, on, on Pornhub? I have thought about whether or not this is too dark to say, um, so please do not judge me. My number one essential lockdown, non-essential, is um, a nana with dementia, right? Turn on the TV and it's coronavirus. You chat to somebody and it's coronavirus. So sometimes it's nice to just ring up somebody and have a chat with someone who still thinks it's 1972 and that they've just returned from a holiday to Mallorca. I told her that I'd just got back from Adelaide Fringe and that Melbourne International Comedy Festival was cancelled. She went, oh yes, it was cancelled when I went. She's never been. She's never been. Uh, I said, all right, you've been, to Austra you've been to Australia. Oh, yes, yes. I said, whereabouts? She went, just the general bit. I said, oh, well, I was in Adelaide. She went, oh, yes, your grandpa was from Adelaide. He wasn't. He was from Teesside. It's just nice escapism. I told, I told her on our last chat I was watching a documentary on Mount Everest, and she just went, been there. You've been up Everest. She went, oh, yeah, yeah. You, you walk up, and then you ski down. Your nana's thinking of uh, Sheffield Dry Ski Slope, I think. I think she is. It's very easy to 
to, to, to mix the two up, though. The scenery is pretty much the same from the top. Everybody, Maisie Adam! Maisie Adam, everyone! Oh, Maisie please, Adam. please, stop, please. It's just, it's just me in a dining room. Thanks ever so much for tuning in and watching this week's episode of the Not So Late Show. We greatly appreciate all the responses we got to last week's big question, do you believe in goats? Here are a few of my favourites. But the winner was this answer from Christopher Louise Cantrell in Manchester. I do actually believe in goats. Never thought I'd say one, but in my, I turned around and in my garden, clear as day, was a little goat titting about on my kid's side. Absolutely horrifying it was. I've reported it. Should have been at home, shouldn't it? Um, and the council shot it with a shotgun. But who am I? I'm just a patriot. Episode two's big question is, what's the best plug socket? Perhaps the one you plug the kettle in, the one next to your bed, or the one inexplicably installed halfway up the wall in the middle of a spare room that's definitely been used to plug in some sort of bizarre, mains-powered sex toy. Get in touch on all the social medias, at The NSL Show, send us an email, rossbriley at notsolateshow.co.uk, or simply attach your answer to a pigeon and fire it out of a t-shirt cannon. We'll be back next week with a fantastic array of special guests, including an exclusive chat with the man who lives in that house in the middle of the M62. And we'll finally get the answer to the age-old question, what's John Ham's beef? Why? We hope you enjoyed the show. My name's Ross Briley, and remember, if it's in the back of the cupboard, by the time this is all over, you'll have definitely eaten it. Good night.